Hello folks and welcome uh, to the next part of our series on Isha Demo fast charging. So uh, we, we last left you guys we had uh, nipped into the local filling station here which is precisely four miles from here and uh, we had checked the fit of our uh, Yazaki EVTV uh, charging port here. Um, with the uh, plug that's on the fast charging station and uh, found that it fitted quite well indeed. So since then um, I have been wiring up uh, all of the necessary signals and high voltage cabling here in the car just to make all of that happen and also fitting the JLD 504 uh, from EVTV which will be the brains of the operation here controlling all of the various um, signals, CAN bus and all of that kind of thing. So why don't I stop talking and we'll uh, go ahead and give you guys a close up of that install here and run through some of the um, data capture that we have at the minute just uh, coming from the JLD505 over the uh, USB. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do is to give you guys a bit of a tour here of what we've been doing uh, since the last, the last update. So at the last time uh, we looked at this, we had our Chidemo socket uh, installed here behind the flap as we can see and uh, we went into the charging station and we checked that we could actually fit the plug in there um, I've looked at some other plugs and uh, there's a summy tumo plug that might give me a little bit of a problem so we may find that we need to tweak the kind of angle on this socket a little bit but hopefully not too much so we've got our flap and so inside the car, uh, what I've done here is I have created a box where I have installed all of the con connections uh, that we need in order to uh, connect our demo signals, CAN bus, pull up resistors and so on. And we've also installed our high, high voltage cabling and our two contactors. And over here, on uh, one of the bulkheads of the car, you will see the famous JLD505. So, basically that is just attached in there um, by means of some self-tapping screws. And we have our cable harness made up and coming around. And uh, up here, what we've got going on. These are our one wire temperature sensor connections. I have not uh, heat shrunk them. As you can see, I have a piece of heat shrink here waiting to go over these guys because we're still experiencing difficulties uh, with those one wire temperature sensors. Um, here's our U USB connection and that's going back inside the car. So that's kind of what we have going on here. Um, from a point of view of the physical setup under the bonnet. Uh, we've also got some uh, Bluetooth connectivity working with the JLD505. So what I'm going to do now is um, we'll go inside the car with the laptop and we'll actually connect up uh, to the device over U USB and just show what some of the uh, demo code is doing at the minute just in terms of logging uh, functions but right now we've pretty much got all the hardware in the car that we need to do uh, to demo fast charging so that's quite a big step for us here folks okay guys so we're inside the car now and uh, what I hope to be able to do is just to give you guys a bit of a look
at, um, at the minute. We've only got some very basic uh, software working on the JLD5005. So pretty much what it's doing at the minute is just reporting on um, it's re reporting on battery parameters. So I've got my U USB hooked up here. So I'm going to go ahead and just fire up the Arduino serial monitor. You can use any serial uh, terminal to connect to the um, to the U USB port. Uh, so we just hit that. Oh, sorry, we don't have that port. Let's change ports. USB zero and serial monitor. Yay! So right now what I've got is I've got a march of data just going down the screen here in my serial terminal. At the minute it's just displaying garbage data because uh, the battery in my car, when the car is switched off and at rest like it is now, or not on on charge, is basically uh, disconnected between the front and the rear battery packs. Um, that's kind of a safety feature that I designed into the car. Uh, that so there are contactors in the rear of the car that basically separate the two pack halves, and the purpose really of that is to give me extra cut off uh, safety features. And if uh, we were we had a shunt. Uh, there's an inertia switch in the front of the car that would basically shut off the power that that flows under uh, the, the car. So from a perspective of emergency responders having to cut into the chassis of the car. Basically there's no high voltage passing from one end of the car to the other. But anyway, the uh, reason for telling you guys about all that is, is that um, obviously now the JLD505 is not reading uh, the pack voltage because there is no pack connected in the car uh, at present. So what we needed was a way that we could actually have um, to override that shut off so that when we pull the car into a Chademo fast charging station and we turn on uh, we need something to turn on that uh, those rear contactors so that we could actually have pack power available to connect to the charger a couple of ways I could have done that with the JLD 505 but what I elected to do uh, was just to put a simple uh, dash switch here uh, set up so that we could override that uh, contactor. So I happen to have one of these kind of aircraft missile switch type things that you see synonymous with uh, old nitrous and all kinds of um, modified car stuff. So I just decided to fit this here on the dash with a little bit of polycarbonate. So what this guy does uh, when we release our safety cover and uh, it just got it epoxied in here at the minute so the epoxy is still a little bit soft but when we throw that switch on there um immediately the jld505 sees the pack voltage which it's it's it starts to display here for me and we see our our other two jld404 meters um actually come up and uh, they're also displaying pack parameters uh, voltage in blue here and current in red so right now uh, the 505 is telling me I'm at 166.245 volts uh, which I would say is pretty good I don't have my fluke meter here with me at the minute otherwise I could verify that but um, it's also giving me a little bit of current draw um, on the pack which I find a little bit strange um, so let me see if I can get you guys in here I'm not too sure how this is going to work so bear with me probably have all kind of frame rate issues now with the uh, uh, screen but uh, 
don't know if this is coming out or not. But there's our uh, there's our parameters that are being displayed. So ideally, when we would be fast charging, um, we would be seeing those guys. Uh, we'd be seeing quite a bit of current going on. So this is just here with the um, with the override switch turned on. Okay, so we switch. We can switch this guy off. And uh, what we can do then is, if I have the key, we can actually start the car. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead now and uh, turn on the car. And get a little bit of extra light here. And, uh, you guys get a great picture of my head. Oh. Here we go. And... Uh, some reason as it tends to do sometimes in this car the heater just comes on all by itself uh, when we first start up I think it's uh, part of how the ECU um, just gives it a little pulse there it goes back off you now just to come just to I suppose when it was a combustion powered car it would have turned on that valve just to keep a bit of fluid going through the heater matrix to keep it from getting uh, clogged up during during long periods of non-use of the actual heater for example uh, summer and so forth so if we turn our heater on where the fluid flow there okay so our meters here in the dash are showing 166 volts and 15 amps and I'm showing 164.6 volts and 15.6, uh, 15.8 amps. I'll bring you guys in to see that. So this is basically the uh, heater uh, drawing power from our pack at the minute. Um, if I type Z and press enter. Hmm, reset amp hours and watt hours. Okay. Now what I'm finding oh okay. This is either thinks I'm charging the battery now, uh, which I'm not. I am um, or it's going to clock from the bottom of the power from the top of the pack and show me how many amp hours I have that way I'm not 100% sure as I did double check that I had the shunt wired in the right di direction and I did so that could be something that we need to address as this awfully looks like it's actually uh, charging the pack as you can see, that's basically the heater there running at about 2.4 or 2.6 kilowatts. Uh, so that's working quite well. We'll turn the heater off. And that's about us. Okay guys, so uh, one last thing that we didn't show there in that segment was the Bluetooth. So I'm hoping this is going to work because my, this uh, tablet uh, that I bought some years ago is really a piece of junk. Um, I should have uh, I should have basically binned it by now. Um, so what I'm trying to do here Basically we have a Bluetooth uh, module inside the JLD505 and I've got it paired to this tablet and I'm just going to try to connect it. Uh, this is just a very simple uh, Bluetooth um, serial port. Oh, boy. This thing helpfully forgets. Um, oh, here we go, HMSoft, that's the name. Connected, yay! So at the minute, obviously, as we saw in the previous video, we have the car 
uh, get the car switched off so we're not reading the actual voltage. So why don't I go ahead, nip inside the car, and we'll turn on that sw switch, and we should be able to see actual uh, real-time information from the battery uh, over Bluetooth. Alright guys, uh, apologies for this one, but uh, no matter how hard I try, I cannot make any of the cameras that I own focus on the screen of this tablet. Uh, it's just not happening. But uh, suffice it to say, the serial terminal here is just basically displaying the same data that we saw on the laptop, but it is transmitting it over Bluetooth. Now, the one issue that we have here is that with the JLD505 installed here under the, the bonnet, uh, as soon as we go inside the car, or indeed close the bonnet, we, we lose that connectivity. So I think having the Bluetooth um, module in the unit is a little bit problematic if it's going to be installed in the engine bay of a car because the chassis of the car basically screens out uh, those particular frequencies. So what I'm going to do now folks is I'm going to put the cover on our Chidemo box, I'm going to flip the car around and we'll plug in here to our charging point and uh, we'll see if we can actually uh, log some um, amp hours. I'm not 100% why uh, we're seeing issues with the um, with the shunt seeming to be running in the wrong direction. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, like I said, I have double checked that I haven't got the shunt and the, the ground backwards. Uh, so, right, let's do it and let's uh, see, see the car charging. guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug in the car, then we'll have a look and see uh, if we're actually getting some charging going on here. A little bit of dodge the charging cable stuff here, which I'm not that, uh, not that spry. Okay, that's our car now on charge. Okay guys, so the car is now charging, and I'm hoping this doesn't look too Blair Witch, but uh, this is our actual charging current now, going into the car, which we nominally do about 10 amps um, here just on the single phase charging, that goes up to nearly 30 amps uh, when we're on three phase. So. Uh, Looks like we are actually charging. So I'm going to leave the laptop on here and just monitor the charge as it just tops off the pack. And uh, see if we can figure this thing out. Alright guys. The car is charging now and uh, I'm going to wrap this installment up, uh, but do stay w with us uh, because we're going to be writing the software for this thing and getting ourselves some Chidemo fast charging done. And um, yeah, there's more stuff to come guys and uh, as always, thanks for watching. See you soon.